So let's get on to the topic for tonight, which is stock catalysts. Now, the difference between a catalyst and a story is recently you've learned to develop a good story, like revenue, cost, or capital. The result of your work could be that the stock price is either overvalued or undervalued. In other words, you're not make, you're not, you are different from the market and you are not making a common mistake. Now, if you're 10% plus or minus in your target price, 20 or 30, that's fine. But once you go above there, you get into a danger zone. Minus 40 or plus or minus 50, it's very unlikely that the market's that different from what you're expecting. And of course, it's very, very rare that you could be right and be 90% different from the market. So when you're doing your final target price, you want to think about a reasonable upside. So the question arises, what needs to happen for this market perception to change? What could be the trigger or the catalyst that could cause the price to move towards the value that you've predicted? What we call a re-rating or a de-rating. Now, a catalyst is something that increases the rate of a reaction without itself being consumed. Enzymes are a good example of a catalyst. Now, a stock catalyst is an event that causes the price to move. These can change investors' sentiments and can mark the beginning or end of trends. The most common catalysts arise due to unexpected information that triggers the market to reconsider a company's prospects. So let's do a little experiment. I want you guys to get on your comment box and get ready to make a comment. Everybody should make a comment in this, so get yourself ready. Let's do a little experiment. Here you can see a CEO giving a presentation to people in the audience. The CEO said, we had an exceptional year and next year is going to be even better. We expect 35% revenue growth next year. What is the most likely reaction of the share price? Number one, it goes up. Number two, it's flat. Number three, it goes down. Let's go back and look at what he said. We had an exceptional year and next year is going to be even better. We expect 35% revenue growth next year. So what would you say? After that, it's, the share price is going to go up, flat, or down. Put your guess in the chat. All right, we're seeing the come in. Got mainly option one and a couple of option twos. Okay, now... What do you think is going to be the reaction to this scenario? Here's the investor in the audience, and he says, a 35% revenue growth is best in class, but it's below market expectations of 45% growth for the next year. Based upon that, what do you think? Up, flat, or down? All right, I'm seeing a lot of threes and twos. Okay, and then flat. So let's look at this. Whether something moves the stock is almost always about the surprise component. Don't look at numbers in isolation like 35% growth. Always compare them with expectations. Only the unexpected part of an announcement impacts the share price. This is an important lesson that many investors fail to apply. Now the question that I guarantee that you're gonna get on your final report day and when you're presenting is this. Is this in the price? What does it mean to be in the price to you? Now let's come back to our uh, example. As an analyst, you need to identify the potential events that could trigger that surprise component. A catalyst that could move the share price. You don't need to be a fortune teller. Nobody can consistently predict the future, but you can formulate some different scenarios and assign some probabilities. Now, there's two types, anticipated catalysts, and these are related to things that we know are coming out. And unanticipated catalysts are sudden shocks that are hardly or barely predictable. So let's dig deeper into this. We start with anticipated catalysts. We're looking ahead. We know some things are coming. It could be earnings. It could be external company drivers. 
M&A, FDA approval, court decisions, and the like. So let's look at this. Each quarter, publicly listed companies must report earnings. The release date is usually pre-scheduled, and the earnings surprise is calculated as the actual EPS that's announced minus consensus EPS divided by consensus. Here we can see a disappointed reaction to Meta's 2021 earnings release, which was announced early in February of 2022. You can see it went down. Now it's important to highlight what we're talking about here. When is the year end? This is for the results of Meta for 2021. Where is the year end? Well, the year end for 2021 is right here. And then 2022 starts at that point to the right. Why is it that the reaction didn't happen right at the end of the year? Why do you think? After all, the reaction was from the earnings from fourth quarter and at the end of the year. Well, we didn't have any information because the company may have known its earnings, but it's against the law for them to go out and tell those earnings. That would be insider trading. And therefore, the company needs some time to prepare its earnings report. You're right, yep. And once they re prepare that, they release it on one specific day. <coughs> and that can cause, in this case, a 24% drop in the share price of the company. Investors reassess Meta's prospects as the company reported a net decrease in users for the first time in history. Plus, iOS update made it harder to track consumers. Now, investors often immediately reward a positive surprises, too. Here we can see Tenant Healthcare reported fourth quarter 2021 earnings of 2.7 compared to the consensus estimate of 1.56. That's a massive increase and that caused a 26% rise in the share price. This was a 73% positive uh, surprise. Now analysts upgraded their recommendations to buy in response to the quarterly earnings surprise. And that can happen quite often. Now next is external company drivers. And these are, have, can have a major impact. It could be oil or gas or corn or wheat, things like those things could have an impact and they're purely external. So here we can see American oil giant ExxonMobil benefits from rising oil prices. Oil price and share price move pretty much in line with each other. And oil price and the share price have a long-term 86% correlation. So to predict the share price, you need to be thinking about the movement of the oil price. Here we can see food processor Archer Daniels Midland gain on rising corn prices. And the long-term share price and corn price are highly correlated. So understanding the dynamics of corn crops can help you forecast movements in agricultural companies. You might want to analyze corn demand, crop rate, weather, supply issues. So what about M&A? In the case of M&A, it's worth looking at both the acquirer and the target company, but the market tends to react strongly to this news. Even though details are uncertain, you can anticipate some potential consequences. The general rule is to buy the company that is being acquired. But since news travels fast, you may not have time to do that. Here we can see uh, Z-Links gets acquired by AMD. And there was rumors and then an official acquisition announcement and then details about the acquisition. Now, something you'll often hear in the market is buy on rumors, sell on fact. And that's exactly what I'm trying to show you is that if you had bought when the rumor first came out, you would have made a huge gain over time. So Food and Drug Administration approvals like biotech and healthcare companies tend to see a massive price surge when they make good progress on product development or results from clinic, clinical studies and official approvals can send stock prices soaring or collapsing. The date of the results announcement is usually known in advance. 
So here we see Thailand's FDA approves growing and extraction of hemp, and it caused Sri Tang Agro STA almost to double in price following that announcement. Amazing, amazing. FDA didn't approve Fibrogen's treatment of anemia patients, and that hurt the biotech company. It fell 40% in one day. Now we also have court decisions and we can have antitrust issues. These usually end up in penalties, but sometimes they can impede business models or prohibit a merger. Here we can see that the UK courts claim that Uber business model was illegal and the share price of Uber in America started collapsing. So now let's talk about unanticipated catalysts. 